Welcome to Creative 10 channel. Today I'm going to use LK150 knitting machine to make socks. We have a lot of socks knitting videos in this channel. I will try to link a few of them in the description box. And today I'm going to use the worsted way yarn. So it will be more like a house socks or boot socks for the winter. And I have a chart for median woman's size. You will find a link in the description box you can download. So let's start with the construction. I'm going to knit from top down. So we will start with ribbon. And there are many ways to do ribbon. You can do hand manipulation and hand reform the pearl stitches. Or you can do a mark ribbon, start with every other needle, knit double row count, and then fold it over. Or you can always hand knit the ribbon. And for the heels and toes, we'll do a basic short row. And after everything's done, we will sew up together. And we can do Kitchener stitches around the toe opening. For the ribbon, I will do hand manipulation in this project. Because it's medium weight yarn, so it's easier to reform compared to the sock weight yarn. So based on my calculation, we cast on 36 stitches. And my tension is number 9, the highest tension on my carriage, and the number 7 on my mast tension. I'm trying to work out the spacing of my hand manipulated pearl stitches for the ribbon. And I have one by two ribbon, so I don't have to manipulate too many stitches. And you can cast on with any method, starting with waist yarn and ravel cord, or you can just start with e wrap cast on. I need 20 rows. It's about three or three and a half inches. It's up to you how many rows you want for the ribbon. And I'm going to start hand manipulation to make the pearl stitches. And I will start from left side, the third stitch, drop it down all the way. I drop down the third stitch from the left side all the way and use a latch tool. And the first two lines, I do it together and I twist it and start latch back up. Just place a yarn in the hook, pull down, and we just keep going. Place yarn in the hook and the pull out. and just place it back to the needle. And I leave two stitches in between and then third stitch again. And we just continue doing that all the way. I pick up the button two yarns and turn around, twist it, and then start latch back. So that's the manipulated one by two ribbon. And now we can continue the next part. I'm going to need a plain stitches, a few rows. I think I will do 15 plain rows before starting the heel. And it's up to you how tall you want this part to be. So I'll put back the weight and need 15 rows. I need 16 rows and now my carriage is on the right side. And next we are going to start do the short row heels. And you can decide you want it on the right side or left side. 
because half of the stitch we have to place on hold and only work on the one side. And many people like to do it symmetrical for the left and right socks. So if your first socks has a heel on the right side, the other socks has heel on the left side. So that way when we do the seaming, it will be symmetrical. So the seaming can be on the inner side of the socks. So I'm going to do the heel on the right side for now. So I will place the left side on hold. On the LK150, it's this Russell lever from two to one. And I do it on both sides. And that just means all the needles on the D position will not need. So I push all the left side needle all the way out to D position. And if you want to knee this back, you can push it. So the needle goes to the C position like that. So the latch is almost touching the yarn and you will knee back. But for now, I want one side to be on hold and I will do the short row on the right. And there are so many ways of doing short row. The way I like is to push out the needle away from the carriage. So it will be this one. And I will need one row. And now I push out the needle on the right side. That's away from the carriage. And then on the left side, I have to place the yarn below the needle. So it doesn't create any holes. So we just show row two stitches. So that means you will create a pocket so we have to add a lot more weight in the center so the stitch doesn't pop out. As for how many stitches to show row for the socks, it's usually one third. So we have 18 stitches on each side. So that's six times three. So we can show row six stitches on each side and leave six stitches in the center. And this is just a guideline. If it's not evenly spaced, you can adjust add one or minus one stitch. So we just continue doing the show row. Push out the needle all the way. That's away from the carriage. And place the yarn below the needle that's close to the carriage. Now we just show row the six stitches on both sides. So it kind of creates this pocket, the extra fabric in the center. We want to make sure we move the weight up. Now we want to do the reverse show row. For the reverse show row, I like to do the stitch that's close to the carriage side and near the center first. So I place the yarn below that stitch and move that stitch back to the C. So it's like touching the yarn here. And then this stitch will be knit back. Now carriage is on the left side. We'll do the same for the first stitch on the left side. Place it back to C position. So the latch is a little bit open. And we'll just keep 
continuing for all the six stitches. Back to C. And make sure you move the weight. The last one here. And then there's one more stitch on the left side. Now we finish the heel short row. Let me take out the weight. You can see we create a pocket. That's our heels. And now we want to continue the part that's between the toe and the heel. And this part really depends on the length of your feet. A simple calculation is the heel is about one and a half inch and the toe is about one and a half inch. So you can measure your feet and see the total length and minus the three inches of the toe and the heel. So for example, I have around nine inches total and minus the one and a half inch in the front and the back you will be about six inches and according to my swatch I have five rows per inch so five times six is 30 rows so I'm going to need about 30 rows and then I will do the toe show row my carriage is on the right side right now and to knit back all the stitches an easy way is just to change the satin change the Russell lever back to number two on both sides so you will need all stitches and I change the counter back to zero 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 let me place some weight here now I need uh, 27 rows because the socks are stretchy so I want to need uh, less rows than my calculation and I want to end my carriage on the left side so that's another topic which side should we do the short row for the toe I have my heel on the right side so generally people like to do it on the opposite side but again this is personal preference. If you don't mind, you can place it on the same side. Now we want to do the short row again. It's basically the same as the heel. I will place this side on hold. So all the needles on right side goes to the D position all the way out. And I will change the Russell lever to holding position. That's the one here on both sides. And we can start our short row the same as before. And since my carriage is on the left side, I like to start from the needle that's away from the carriage. So I push it all the way out and need one row. And then we'll push out the other side and make sure we move the yarn below this stitch. So it will not create a hole there. And we just keep doing that until we have six stitches on each side and six stitch in the middle. Don't forget your weight.
Now we finish the show row, the first part of the show row. We are going to do the reverse show row. And I will do it the same way. My carriage is on the right. Here's the yarn. I will place the yarn below the first needle and place a needle to C position and knit. And now we do this needle. Place the yarn under and push the yarn to C. And we just keep going. That's the last one. Now we finish the short row. We are done with the socks. And we can just knead a few rows of waist yarn. And then we can sew up the socks. I'm going to cut off the yarn end and leave in the tail so I can sew up later. I just thread the stitch with my circular knitting needles. So it's all ready to go for my Kitchener stitches. We just have to do the Kitchener stitches here and then sew up the sides. And you can pick up one leg of the V from each side and just go through every stitches. Or you can do the mattress stitches. And for the other foot, you can do the opposite you can have the heels on the left side and the toes on the right side. And for the Kitchener stitch, for the socks, there's a tendency that there will be too many stitches on both sides and it will look a little bit funny. So one way is to skip the setup stitch and also skip the last stitch. So here is the yarn end. I will skip the setup stitch. And I will knead the first one, take it off, and then purl. And in the back, I will do purl, take it off, and knit. And I'll just keep repeating that. Knit, take it off, purl. Purl, take it off, and knit. And tighten the stitches as you go. Now I have the last two stitches. I'll do a neat, neat, take it off. And then just purl, take it off. So that's the Kitchener stitch. And then I can just sew up the side seams. All the way to the top. And I'm just picking up one leg of the V from each side. So it's not too bulky. You can turn it around to find the edge stitch. Kind of open up a little bit. That's after sewing up. You can see a little bit the line. I sew through every stitch so it doesn't have any holes or gaps. And in the corner, there's still a little bit of gap, but you can add a piece of yarn and sew up a little bit more if that bothers you. And that's the other side. It's still a little bit holes. And that's the ribbon. It's very stretchy. So don't forget to download my pattern and that can be a starting point for your reference. And you can adjust the stitches and row count to make it your own. Thank you so much for watching today and see you next week.